So I'm going to talk about the whole off-call thing, and I think it's particularly interesting because it is like, on the one hand, by far, the, you know, the, in a, a major policy screw-up in algorithms that set government back you know, a, a significant way. Um, and I don't think we've really learnt the lessons from it, is the first point. And the second point is, I think the lessons from it point to some quite important cultural skews in the way we think about these problems, which mean, although we're unlikely to make exactly that same mistake, uh, we are likely to make similar mistakes in the future. So the, the first point I want to make is that the understanding of what was going wrong at the time was, uh, was, was, was skewed. So the, the, the belief that what had gone wrong at the time, the it's really interesting, the narrative that came to mind was that it was uh, biased against certain, parts of certain sectors of society, certain communities, and that, it, that the level of accuracy was surprisingly, you know, we hadn't expected that level of inaccuracy. Uh, and it, I think some people still think that that is the issue. And what's, what's particularly interesting about that is that, that we, how quickly we went to that narrative and how we decided that that must be the issue. And the reason that's interesting is because those were the two issues that most consumed everybody thinking about the policy and thinking about how to deliver. Those were the issues that everybody was thinking about. Yeah? And the result was we were not thinking about the issues that really mattered. Now, I'm just going to talk through those two issues of accuracy and bias first, just to sort of give a bit of context and then come back to um, what, what are the lessons we need to learn from that. So the first thing, just to, just to sort, of, sort of set out the situation, I, I, I think Ed Humpston, I saw his badge, but he's not here, is he? Anyway, Ed, Hump, Ed Humpston did a review of this, and it's, it, which is extremely helpful. helpful. But it's worth, worth stressing that the, the, what the algorithm did was redistribute in a more equitable fashion the, uh, the teacher's assessed grades and that by getting rid of the algorithm, we ended up with a less equitable distribution. The, um, now, now, that was disguised because of inflation, yeah? so everybody got more. But if, if, you, if equity is the proportion of a good thing that different sections of society get, the, taking away the algorithm went, the rich walked away with a bigger slice of the pie than if you implied the algorithm, applied the algorithm. But that was not the sense of what was going on. So there's a kind of interesting point there about kind of understanding what is, what is, what is happening. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of easily fooled by, by inflation. Um, but it's also, there's an issue here about locus of responsibility, because obviously if you have a single algorithm making those decisions, it's like immediately very challengeable and very easy to challenge, which actually is quite a good thing in some ways. Uh, but whereas if, if responsibility is very distributed, it's very hard to challenge. So uh, it would be quite impossible for, a, well, it wouldn't be impossible, but it would be much harder for a law firm to take government to court for not using an algorithm to redistribute grades than it is to take them to court for using an algorithm. Um, but that, that point, I'll come back to that point, because that's a locus of responsibility thing. I think you can think about it two ways. You, it, we should be thinking about it in terms of, well, how should responsibility for decision-making be applied? And I'll come back to that. Um, now, and on the accuracy point, the, the, point, the point to say here is, is accuracy was obviously very well known. We were very clear and indeed said publicly, look, you know, 15% of candidates, are, you know, 30% of these things are going to be, you know, people are going to think are wrong. Half of those people are going to be right that they was wrong. Half of those people are going to be wrong, but we absolutely have no way of knowing who is who. Yep. And this was obviously the most nerve-wracking thing about the whole whole issue. Yep. But it was conceived entirely, pretty well entirely, in terms of distributional fairness, and the justification for holding down inflation, with the result knowing that a significant proportion of candidates would be robbed of their university place. Yep. That they would have done better in an exam. Yep. That, that was considered a, 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 you know, a, a reasonable thing to do, partly because the government didn't want to increase grades and increase university places, and partly because it would be unfair between different cohorts. There would be a, a knock on unfairness the next year, and it would be unfair on the, on the previous year. So if you're just thinking about distributional unfairness, you can kind of make an argument to say that's a reasonable thing to do. The, 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 the problem with it is much more in terms of a process fairness. If you've spent your life working towards an elite university place or think that, you know, what, any university place, and you think this is going to transform your life, and to, you, you're prepared, you think you can pass an exam, and then you get told, well, we're, sorry, you're not going to take an exam, we're going to just guess, basically, <laughs> on the best evidence available, whether you would have passed or not, and that's going to decide your life. It's a pretty extraordinary thing to ask people to do. Now, it wasn't that we didn't, weren't aware of this, it was just a sort of political view that that's what we're going to ask people to do. It's a pandemic. They're going to accept it. And I want to come back to that because 
it's really interesting that we live in a culture that that was thought to be something that was an okay thing to do. And primarily on arguments about distributional fairness. Um, just a minor point on this accuracy thing as well. Just, I just, it's quite an interesting issue from a public policy point of view. One of the problems we had was if you ever do this kind of algorithmic thing, particularly if you're working with quite, you know, the, the level of data available to predict what someone's get was not that, that complete. I mean, we did think about doing much more models on an individual level, but then that has, you know, it's bad enough having your grades predicted on the base of the school you go to, to have it predicted on a kind of much more in-depth personal profile was in some ways even more offensive. Um, but one of the problems was if you use these kind of models, you definitely get wonky results all over the place. And uh, we had so many debates about what do we do about the wonky results. And in, 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 a, in any private sector organisation, you would just polish it up. You know, you'd get in there and go like, that's obviously stupid, fix it. Yep. But it, it, if you're in a situation where, on the one hand, the government says, we're definitely going to stick with this, we understand people aren't be unhappy, we're going to go through with it, and you're definitely going to end up in court, the one problem you have is that any such polishing is essentially arbitrary. There are no rules that you can come up with. If you just apply another rule, the wonk just appears somewhere else, and then you apply another rule, you never get rid of it. You only get rid of it by making arbitrary judgments. And if you end up in court, and the judge says, why did you decide to do that? He said, well, it's look wrong. You lose the case instantly. You're, just, you know, you're not acting. You've got to demonstrate every... And we'd gone through this with the English... You know, I don't know if you remember, in 2012, there's a big kind of uh, argument about changing the great re establishing grade boundaries, um, which adversely affected one group of students, but was fairer on the broader group of students. And the judge uh, accepted in the end, after a lot of argument, that it was a reasonable thing to do because it was every line of it could be rationalised. But the moment you have a bit where you go, we just thought that was OK, you're dead. And so we, in the end, we didn't do it. And it was a most uncomfortable thing. And we put in place a sort of, we'll fix it after the event. People will apply to us. But it's just interesting that, and I personally do think in public law, if we're going to use these algorithms, we need to think about this and actually have some way in which a public authority can legitimately just make kind of sensible judgments. Um, but I, I, I want to come back to the, 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 this main point about um, accuracy. So this, this idea that sort of, well, this level of inaccuracy is just life. It's, it's a problem. The problem's a pandemic. It's nobody's fault. The kids are just going to have to suck it up. Um, and that was literally the kind of level of debate. Um, the, uh, what's, what's amazing about it is how deeply ingrained this was. Okay, so it's, you know, it's very easy to say, oh, Gavin Williamson made a stupid decision. Yep. The, it's what Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland are all independent jurisdictions. They could have all made their own decisions. Yep. All of them decided that this was a thing to do. Yep. Okay. And the teachers agreed, the universities agreed, political parties were all united. The level of cons what's alarming about this was the level of consensus that this was the right thing to do. Given how massively wide of the mark this was as a piece of judgment, it was completely pervasive throughout our society. Yep. Even to the point that when we did sort of tested it with, with the public, I've got to say the parents were the people who mainly went, you're kidding. Right. But, but kids, actually, you talk them through it, they kind of could see, they understood the system a bit more, and they kind of went, yeah, I suppose that's all you can do, really. But obviously they had not experienced receiving a piece of paper telling them they had failed an exam, they were absolutely 100% certain they would pass, and there was no way of proving them wrong. I mean, they, and, and many of them were right. At least half of them were right. Um, and so it's, it's just, you know, even the kids who were going to be affected by this in a, in a, in a, in a, in a conversation sort of went, yeah, I can see why they'd do that. Um, where in, and I'll contrast that with just a brief conversation with a, a, a professor in Italy who, who works on these issues. And he just, he just thought it was insane. He just thought, I cannot understand how anyone for one minute could have thought this was okay. And for him, it was much more akin to say, taking a judicial process and saying, well, we can't run the courts now because we've got a pandemic, so we're going to run a model that will predict whether or not you're guilty or innocent, and then we'll just give you a sentence. And by the way, it's like 70% accurate, so that'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, we would not even have thought of doing such a thing, but for some reason, in this instance, we felt it was fair. Um, and, and part of the issue there, I think, is to do with the fact that, um, so that it's, A, it's a cultural thing, and secondly, there's no kind of protection against it. So, and, I, and I'm not sure it necessarily is a good idea to try and do this, but if you mean distributional fairness, there are clear legal responsibilities. Everybody is focused on distributional fairness all the time because everyone knows they're going to end up in court if they don't do it, and they think pretty hard about it. The, the, the process fairness, the, fa the unfairness of saying to somebody, we're going to guess what you would have got an exam, even though you, you know, you're 
work, you know, for the past how many years to get past this exam, the fact that we just take that away from you and give you a prediction, right? The fact that, that that unfairness, right, there's no legal obligation not to be unfair in that way. It's just a political judgment, what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. I mean, clearly it's interesting in, in, in a judicial framework, we would absolutely instantly see the unfairness. But in this context, we were just incapable of properly registering just how unreasonable a thing to do this was. Um, so that, you know, that is just uh, worth reflecting on that. Um, so, and what I said, so we don't make it, why we have not learnt these, these, these lessons, that these are exactly the sorts of cultural mistakes we're likely to make us again. And, and when, I, when I sort of think about, well, what, you know, what might you do about that, I think there's, there's, there's a couple of things to, to think about. One of which is this issue around um, thinking about, you know, as I say, I'm not sure, uh, people tend to say, well, if you'd engage the public more. I, m my own worry is actually, no, it's, it's kind of like the public could easily agree to something which they later horribly regret. So I do think it's, it's, um, it requires a bit more of, of thinking very carefully about how do we decide what is a, 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 you know, fairness in this procedural sense. And what perhaps the most useful thing is to not pretend algorithms are replicating other systems. Because... In a way, giving, being given a university place on the basis of a prediction of what you would have got an exam yeah, is not, it, it's not the same as passing the exam. Yeah. And the issue here, it's worth stressing as well, the issue here is not accuracy. Because yeah, exams aren't that accurate. You know, every year, loads of kids who should have got an A, should have got a B, should have got a C, doesn't happen on the day. Yeah. And uh, you know, one of the, literally one of the conversations at the time was, well, actually, you know, it's quite possible that the actual level of accuracy, if you had an independent measure of the algorithm, could be higher than the the level of accuracy in the exam. But that's not the point. The point is what's legitimate, what's acceptable, what's a reasonable way to treat somebody. And part of the reason we didn't deal with that was because we called these things A-levels. They weren't A-levels. You know, and we, we kind of imagined that the rest of the system was all okay. You know, so that people had offered these, universities had offered places, we were giving these certificates that said A-level. The, the one point at which Ofqual could have put up a spanner in the entire works, and we did talk about it, was, it was to say, look, these aren't A-levels. Yep. An A-level is defined as something where you go and take an exam, you demonstrate, it doesn't, you might argue about whether it's a good way of doing it or not, but that is what we've all signed up to. And now we're publishing these bits of paper, which is why we'd said, like, just use school certificates, you know, call them something else. You know, get, you, the one thing is, to, how do you frame the problem? The problem was, literally, how do we get kids to progress? Yep. You do not need to issue A-level certificates to do that. So framing the problem d differently was one way of doing it. You could have said, look, universities, all the offers are cancelled, you know, universities are going to decide who they want to take. Ofqual is going to generate a set of data. Okay? We're going to give it to the universities. You can give them anything else. Universities are going to have to make their, review their decisions. Students can rethink about where they want to apply. All bets are off. Start again. Yep. Let, you know, not pretend that this thing was something that it plainly wasn't. Um, so that's, that's, that's uh, you, know, you know, one lesson from it. And, and um, the, the, uh, the other, you know, is this point about what is a legitimate, reasonable thing to do. And it, it is about agency, it's about fairness in the broadest sense, not just distributional fairness. Uh, and I think we aren't very good. You know, we tend to pretend that algorithms are replicating systems, not fundamentally changing them, when they are fundamentally changing them. And we tend to underestimate things like legitimacy, fairness in the broadest sense, just people feeling that they have some control over their life, that they're being treated reasonably, that those got massively downgraded because of an emergency and all the focus is on how accurate it can be, how can we get the distributional fairness right, if we do that we'll be fine. And um, that was a mistake, put it mildly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.